Hi guys, it's Chris from the Fulcrum Kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really, really simple little fish cake. Now the government recommend we have two portions of fish a week, one of which should be oily. Now that should be something like heron, sardines, mackerel or salmon even. Absolutely delicious. Fish is good for you. The reason why we go for oily fish is it contains omega-3, which obviously has its own benefits. Now, this is a really, really simple recipe. It's a great one to do if you've got children, grandkids, nieces, nephews, or any community setting as well. Just a great way of using up leftover mash. So if you've had a roast dinner the day before, you've got some leftover mash with a few simple ingredients, we can make a really delicious fish cake. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk you through the ingredients that I've got. I've got some mashed potato, obviously. Now, obviously, you can cook this off. If you're doing it on the day, just make sure that you cool it down first so that it helps it to bind up a bit. We've also talked about binding. We've got some egg there. Then I've got some tinned tuna. Now, I'm using tinned tuna. It's been in spring water rather than brine oil. I've just drained it off, got as much of the uh, water out of as I can do. You could use salmon as well, so tinned salmon will work really well with this. Or in actual fact, you could any, use anything left over shredded chicken, you could use vegetables, so think about any veg you've got left about. You almost make like a little bubble and squeak kind of thing. We've got some fresh flat leaf parsley that I've just chopped up as well. Some salt and pepper as well. And it's just a case of mixing it all together. Now, the other thing as well is, you can get adventurous with this. So you could add in some smoked paprika, or you could add in some cayenne pepper, or some chopped fresh chili even. So just think about some flavors, adding different things in, different herbs, so you could add some dill in, that would work really well. And then we're just gonna finish it off with a little grating of uh, lemon, so lemon zest as well. And then we'll just get frying them, serve it with a salad, and you've got a delicious balanced meal. Right guys, so as I say, it's really, really simple. So we're just gonna simply take our mash, and then we're gonna add in our tinned tuna. Now it's great if you can to get these prepped ahead because we want to get them in the fridge to allow them to cool a bit and sort of set. Obviously your match is cold anyway. As is your tuna, we're just gonna add in our egg. Pop that in there. Sprinkle in our parsley. And then we just want to get a pinch of salt and pepper. Like so. And then we're just gonna bring it all together in the bowl. Now it's important obviously when you cook this, if you think your mash is obviously being cooked, pre-cooked, you've got your tuna in there which is from a tin, so obviously you can have that as well. But it's important that we cook it through because it's got raw egg in there. We'll just bring everything together with a fork and then we're going to get our hands in and make little patties. Couldn't be simpler. So if I just show you there, you can see our mix is all coming together now. And as I say at this stage, you could be experimenting, you could be adding in some other herbs, so dill as we mentioned, chervil, you could even, you know, if you wanted to, you could add in some peas to this and some mint, so you've got like a pea and mint little pate. So it's quite a versatile dish, great way of using up mashed potatoes, so if you've got surplus potatoes, another little thing of there, uh, another way of using those up. So that's pretty much mixed up together now. So the last thing we want to do, just before we start shaping these into patties, we're just going to take about half a tablespoon of flour and add that in as well. And it's all going to just help to, to bring it together and give it a good mix up. Now the last little flourish is we're going to add in a little bit of lemon. Now lemon and fish just work so well together. Just go for the unwaxed lemons if you, if you can. But if you do get waxed lemons, just give them a bit of a scrub first of all to get that off. And then basically just work it around. It smells amazing. And obviously you're not going to waste your lemon, so when you finish with it, you can use that for putting into like little dressings. There we go, it smells great. Or just cut it into wedges, pop in a bit of hot water, that's a nice little refreshing drink. Lovely, so we've got that in, give it a mix. And then we're ready to start building our patties. Get a clean board, and we're just going to sprinkle it with a bit of flour there, and then Get your gloves, clean hands, get your hands in. And you just want to bring this all together so it almost forms like, it's almost like you're making a bread dough really, you know, you're just sort of almost kneading it a bit. Squash it all together and then just take off a section and you can make these as big or as small as you want. Bring it together in your hand, so you've almost got like a bowl there. Then onto your board, 
and we're just going to flatten it down. Now don't worry if these break up a little bit, you can just start again, push them back together. It's nice and rustic as well that way. And then you want to get them about, ooh, say two centimetres thick. But when you're making these, it's really important you get them all a similar size because obviously you want them to cook evenly. And then just flip it over, just dust it lightly in flour. And there you go guys, that's your pate. Look at that, beautiful. Pop them onto a dusted board. So I've just basically got a tray here covered in foil, a little bit of flour on there. And then when I've made them all up, I'll cover it in clean film, get it in the fridge, minimum sort of 30 minutes. So you could prep these ahead of time, do them in the morning. And then when you're ready to cook, they only take eight minutes, so it's really, really fast. So I'm gonna carry on making these guys and then we'll get them in the fridge. Right, so these have had about 30 minutes in the fridge or so. As I say, you can prep these in the morning, leave them till a bit later on uh, during the day, and then do them at night time, cook them off. They're gonna take about eight minutes on either side, depending on obviously how thick you've made the actual fish cakes. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some oil. Now, we always measure out the oil in the kitchen, rather than free pour, because obviously you'd be tempted to put too much in. So I'm thinking here, it's gonna be about half a tablespoon, and I'm just using olive oil here. You could use sunflower oil, vegetable oil. Don't use the extra virgin olive oil because you're going to use that for your dressings. Too good to be cooking with. And then we're just going to take one of our patties very gently and we're just going to place it in the pan. Give it a little bit of a move around just so you can check it's not sticking. And then the same again with another patty. We're just going to pop that in as well, like so. And you literally just want to leave them. So don't be tempted to muck about, start prodding them and stuff. Let them cook, you'll start to hear them sizzle, sort of medium-ish heat. They'll start to sizzle a little bit in the oil, and then about halfway through, just flip them over. You must make sure they're piping hot all the way through though. So they'll start cooking, so I'll see you in about eight minutes. So guys, now that the fish cakes are cooking away, I'm just gonna make a lovely little simple salad to go with them. So I've just basically got some washed leaves here, just a few there. And it's a really, really simple thing to do this. Just put together famous wounds, a nice little dress. Now this is a little Jamie Oliver tip, this one. We're gonna use extra virgin olive oil here, so it's good quality oil. You can use normal olive oil if you want. So I'm using three teaspoons of oil. And then remember that lemon that we used before for the zest? Give it a little roll, and that's just gonna make it nice and squidgy. Get all the juice, and I'm just gonna slice it across like so. And then, roughly about one tablespoon of acidity. So it's three parts oil, one part acidity. Pop a lid on, nice clean jar, so keep yourself a nice clean jar. Mine says jam jar dressings. And then there you go, there's your little oil. Now you can use a little bit of this, you don't want to overpower the, your dressing, you just want to sort of put it on there, just very gently. Um, don't drown it, because the acid will make the, the leaves wilt. And then you've got your dressing. And then whatever's left, pop it in the fridge, it'll keep for a few days. So just gently drizzle it on. And then with clean fingers, you just want to gently sort of feather through your dressing. Now, you can take that to another level. You could add mustard, just be careful of allergens. Obviously you can season a little bit of salt and pepper, but if you've got rocket in your salad, it's quite peppery anyway. So just dress the leaves gently, and that'll be served with our fish cakes. Absolutely delicious. So guys, that's it done. We've basically cooked our fish cakes. We just check them with the probe, check that the temperature, give them four minutes either side, uh, just check the pipe and hot all the way through. So it's just ready to plate up. So I've got myself a nice little plate there. Just very carefully take your fish cakes, pop them on, and then you've got that lovely salad as well. A little bit of salad. What would be nice to go with this as well, some maybe potato wedges but you've got obviously potato in your, in your um, fish cakes there. So you've got potato, you've got protein from your fish, got a little bit of salad, you put some tomatoes, cucumber there as well if you like. And then basically, that there guys, is our, not for me knife, our uh, fish cakes done. Not bad eh? 